everybody welcome back to the sawmill up again on the mill once again english walnut crotch log let's get some measurements on this see what we're dealing with all right a guesstimate here we're about 35 inches on the crotch and so again we're gonna have to trim some of that down how about the how about here deb Okay, not counting this little branch nub sticking out here. About 17 inside the bark. All right, here on the butt end, about 26 inches. Top to bottom, how about across? Inside the bark. About 23. So we should be able to pass this through the throat of the saw on this end. No problem. No, 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 we're gonna be turning it. So yeah, we're gonna have to trim a little off of this, unfortunately. Okay, our biggest problem here with the LT35 and this particular log is in order to get this through the throat of the saw, we can't take it all off of this side because we're going to be cutting into this nice crotch grain that goes down through here. So we're going to have to make a call, cut a few off of here, probably right down to about the edge of this. And then there's a little bit of a swell on this on the bottom side down here. We're going to take a little off. Where's my finger at? There's my finger. I'm going to have to take a little bit off right here. And that should get us down to the 25, 25 and a half. If we're lucky, we'll get it to fit through. Need a wider mill. All right, let's take a close look before we get the mill in here again. Like I didn't want to get down any of this crotch figure because you can see there's going to be some nice swirled grain in here. I'm not seeing it, but then I didn't see it last time either. Any kind of uh, undulations in the log that would indicate curl. The undulations run this way. You can see it there and there. Not this way, which would indicate curl. So I don't know what we're going to find in there. Again, this is a separate tree altogether. It's growing, we're growing right next to each other. The last one was about estimated at about 100 years old, believe it or not. Only by the, the, the species and the, the uh, diameter of the log. So we're not gonna have, a, it doesn't look like we're gonna have a whole lot of dark heartwood, unless the heartwood starts here. And that's that, we'll have to see once we get into this. And I hope we pick up that dark heartwood a lot earlier. So got quite a bit of bark on this side. I'm not seeing, again, I'm not, ah, uh, no, no, we do have some right there. So we are going to have some curl in this log. Nice. I, st I can see it just barely along here. Hopefully you're picking that up right here. Yeah, we are going to have some curl in there. Doesn't look like it's going to be very drastic. So let's keep our fingers crossed. All right, let's go ahead and start whittling things down. Get this thing set up to start slicing some slabs.
Got a two and a half inch screw. Go with that. Save the save the blade. This is purple. <laughs> this is the weirdest ones. I said you got your standard greenish looking color down here, but this is purple. Pinkish purple something. Yeah, I screwed up a cut here. Instead of dropping one inch, I dropped two. Let me see where that ends up. I can't go any further down. Both ends are cut about the same level between here and that flat spot back here. So you get some of that purple in there. Yes, I do. That's different. I have no idea where that came from. There's weird looking colors under the bark when I pulled the bark off over there, too. Uh, we're going to have to flip this back up. Take a little off this edge here. Because we're still at 29 inches across here. I've, so I've got to lose another 4 inches. Like I said, I really don't want to take any more off of here if I can avoid it. Maybe one more 1 inch slice. So I'll still have a lot of this, whatever this is. This is going to be a lot of really weird looking grain in the crotch there. So trying to maintain that. And we got another one of these big cavities in here. Which will look, which will look cool if we can capture it. I might have screwed up this whole bottom cut by putting that in there. But I'm not going to slab from this side. Or I am going to slab from this side. But I've got to get the width down. So let's get this thing turned back over. And maybe cut a little off of here and a little off of there. And see what we got.
just making a minor adjustment uh, coming up. You can see the logs just a little too far over hits the uh, the inside blade guide. So take the can hook, give it a little nudge over to one side, and we're able to fit the rest of the way through. Never seen pink walnut. And it is curly. Just like I thought. You see it? Whole bottom's curly. Honey. Come take a look. Clean out the little cavity there. That'll make a nice little feature. All right, let's get a good look at this one. I don't know if you guys are picking it up. I don't know if this is gonna stay, but pink walnut, this is the first I've ever seen that. Wow. And here we are, we got the dark heartwood and they're heavily dark streaking. It's always in the uh, English walnut. This was a little wavy cut. So we changed the blade out. That That's the one we cut the last English walnut with and a, a red oak log and a couple of red oak logs, no. Yeah, a red oak log and got a uh, couple of six by sixes out of that one. So that blade was about done. And if you notice, we caught that one screw sticking out the side. But here, pink. Never seen that before. And like I thought, picking up the curl. It's looking good. All right. <laughs> Deb, take a look at this. It's still got the pink. I don't know if that's going to stay pink or what. I like these. I know. You like the wormholes. I could, they were under the bark, too. When we pulled the bark off, there was little uh, grubs or whatever that were born into it. So there's just some more character. Got this little recessed area here. That's nice. Great. I'm not picking up crotch figure just yet, but if we do, it's going to be right out through here. And it's going to be pretty swirly because it, by the looks of the outside, managed to keep it on. Even though we trimmed that side off, very tried to trim a lot less on this one. Trimmed a little bit off of here. we got plenty of room at this end. That end's a little tighter, especially where you see it kind of bows out right here. That's why you see us stop the saw and move it back and forth. I'm trying to maintain as much live edge as I can on this one. So far, so good. But this stuff looks great. Let's take one good look down the log. Man, let's just look at these cool bullseyes. Just everything about this just picks up a lot of character in it. At least I don't think that's gonna. Here's a double branch knob here. <laughs> Picking up one here. No heartwood in here until you get to this knot. Like I said, we got this little recess feature. It's about an inch and a half deep. About two inches wide, foot long. Been picking up some heartwood down here on this this main leader. Still wait for that crotch wood to come out. Let's get cutting into this one and uh, see what we can find.
Ready? I'm gonna set it on its edge. Go. I think we're going to have some crotch rain in this one, folks. There it is. There it is. Got a little bit. Got a little bit. Crotch feathering we're talking about. Stuff's looking awesome. And we still have that pink coloring in there. <laughs> Sap was a little wide, but it, it definitely has a nice contrast. And if we can maintain that pink coloring when this dries, that'd be, <laughs> that'd be amazing. Pink black walnut. Let's get some water on this thing, get a look at it. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> oh yeah, there it is. We got some good crotch feathering in this one, folks. We'll check this out up here, I'll demonstrate the rest of it. Pink. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's going to make me laugh every time I have to say it. Yes. That's a really nice crotch feathering coming up here. Look at that. All the way out to the sapwood. Down here about 18 inches, 16, 18 inches of crotch feathering so far. And we'll probably pick up a lot more on the next cut. So, Looking good. Let's take a look down the rest of the log. And that cut flattened out real nice. You could hear it when that when that old 235 starts groaning. That's a hint you need that new blade. Don't keep pushing it, you just make them wavy cuts. Not worth it. Not worth it at all. Beautiful stuff. We still have the curl on both sides. I'm just picking up on that curl. There it is. There you see those angles right there. Nice stuff. Had to nip a tiny bit off the bottom edge right there. And you come across and you got all this, uh, this uh, we call it bug damage, little bore holes, a lot of character in the wood. Nice stuff. More of these cool looking uh, knot holes. It's just not regular old bullseyes in these things. Very cool. All right, let's get a good look at this one, one end to the other. Just about to the pith here on this limb. Picking up a lot of nice crotch figure on this one. Still more to come. We've got, got a little bit of ways to go there. Should pick up a little bit more crotch feathering. Maybe, maybe it'll run down a little bit deeper. I don't know, that limb came in at a hard angle, almost at a 90 degree to the, to the trunk. So it may not be, it's when they come out gradually, you get the best crotch figure. This is nice. This is real nice. And that was <laughs> that little pin knot or whatever that is there. Take a look at that. That's yeah, cool. Again, nice little feature on these things. Just all this interesting stuff that you don't normally see on other trees. Of course, we got the curl, the pink coloring, the darker striations, I guess you call it. It's not spalting. It's not rot, it's nothing like that. It's just what English walnut does. That little bit darker wood. Weed. Again, the worm holes yep. along the outside, the bore holes. Pink. That's some nice, nice stuff right there. Pink's still along. Yeah, I don't know. I'm hoping that pink really stays in there when it dries. It should. I don't see why it wouldn't. I have no but idea you never know. You know. It's a mineral in the ground. This grew right next to the other tree. The other tree didn't have this one. They were like maybe 15 feet apart. Wow. All right, let's get into that next cut, see what we can find. I didn't 
record any of that. Okay. Let's get a look at this next one. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that, Deb. See it? Yes, I do. My crotch grain really yes. stretched out now. Now we're down in about two feet or more. Nice. Good feathering. Well, I don't see the pink anymore. I think we no, might have I lost don't. the pink coloring. Not right here a little bit. Mm. Unless that's just from yeah, a little bit along the edges. But get some mortar on this see what it looks like hey, there's some weird yeah, right here feathering the there i think it's raining oh goodness <laughs> i think we got a little shower going on folks all right, water. all right water's here let me get up here ready yeah <laughs> right on my shoe <laughs> scrape a little out that way towards your end Here. Yeah, before I get you in. Look here. at that end. That's end Look at that. I still have pink. You know what else I have? A wet sock. <laughs> That's cool. Look at that. You got the feathering going down in here, but then this is that waviness I saw on the outside of the log that I did not want to cut out, and that's why. Exactly why. That's so beautiful. Looking real good. Yeah, we have some weird crotch thing going on here. Must have been a branch coming out on an angle from here. All these little pin, pin knots. Yeah, you can see this travels from here all the way out to right there. There's a, there's there's a one. pin knot sticking out the Shop, end here. Right here. That's the same thing. This goes all the way across, sticks out on the side. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> we still have the pink a little bit. A little bit pink along the edges. Yep. Of uh, branch nubs in here. Wow, this is really far down in the log. I'm surprised that the branch that low on the tree because the stumps were not tall where these came from. Very cool. Let's get one more look down the log, down the slab, and we'll get that next cut done. There's still a little bit pink. Yeah, we got oh, we got some more curls showing up up here now, too. Nice. All right, let's get into that next cut and uh, see what we got. I think we only have one or two more cuts to make. Okay, take this and out. And that's it. cuts we're gonna make here. Yeah, that's gonna be a, 
some extra branch nub coming out over here. Very cool. Oh. Look at that. That's All right, we're starting to get a lot of sapwood up here at the crotch. I think we lost the crotch bend. The last little remnants of it right here. We took up this big old branch nub over here. Yeah, let's get some water on this. It's gonna look cool. It's good. There you go. Man, this still looks good down here. Crotch train is here and now it's about a foot wide. Cool looking stuff. Here. All right, check this out. It's kind of speckled out here. And then his crotch screen just went really wide. Let me get my gloves off. Really wide across here. See all the waviness there. So there's still some crotch screen. And then we picked this one up. Like another branch went out below this one a long time ago. And then we picked up some crotch screen along here. Doubled up, double crotch crane in the walnut. Looking good. Still got all of our bore holes. Still a little bit of pink along the edges. Now people might look at this and go, ooh, no, for me, that's good stuff right there. That's hey, wormy chestnut, guys. This is worm, this is just like wormy chestnut. Now that we've opened it up, if there's anything in here, the cold will get to them. And they'll be done over this winter. They won't have time to bore any deeper. Yeah, there's still a lot of curl along here too. This is good looking stuff. Deb, you're missing this. You better get over here. She's getting stickers for me. I don't think she saw this one yet. Goodness. Look at look at this. You got that? I like this. Yeah, this That's crotch screen really just kind of spread out like crazy in here, almost like a almost like a double crotch screen here. And then we picked this crotch feathering up yeah, here. That's nice. Yeah, that's different. It looks like they must have had multiple branches and they lost one a while back and then the other one kept growing. You got waves in here too. Look at the small waves. Oh that's the that's the blade chatter. Is it? <laughs> yeah, that's the ones right in here like that, yeah. that's a blade chatter, unfortunately. But we still have all this curl going down along the edge. Yeah, we're we have a little bit of pink. We're starting to lose that. Yeah, I think we might. it might show up when we cut the other side open. We have to flip this over now. I don't know what the heck that's can't right. get any further down because I can't move my clamp further down. I can't move my stops any further down. So now we can flip it over and we should still be able to fit between the... Uh, the throat of the saw or fit through the throat of the saw but cool all right one last look guys and then we're going to get flipped over i think we're going to make two more cuts we're going to have one thin piece come off the top and then because i do want them all to be two and a half inches thick yeah i think we'll get one more piece then a that, craft that piece. one odd thick piece just doesn't really work out ever <laughs> all right we gotta flip all right
I don't know really what we're going to see on this one, guys. No, we don't. There's some of that pink coming back out again. <laughs> yeah, right there. Yep. yeah, we kind of lost our sapwood. A little bit of impression figure right in here. Looks pretty cool. A crotch figure right in here. Pink again. I picked up a lot of that pink coloring down in here. Again. All this right in here is pink. I wonder if that has anything to do with the bugs. Well, that could be. Maybe it did. No, uh, no turkey phoenix in this one. <laughs> we got a lot of bugs. You see how it, you see how it stopped chattering? Yeah. When you got your speed right? Because when you were much slower here. Yeah. See all the chattering? Yeah. But you, you, have to, you have to listen to the engine. If the engine doesn't allow you to go fast, you gotta, you gotta keep it slow, so. I'll be back. Sorry folks, I gotta get that mask off. I'm wearing a mask too much these days. <laughs> oh, this is still some beautiful stuff here. This is a nice size bench. Wall shelf, maybe half of a, maybe split this one down the middle, flip it around and pour an epoxy river down the middle of it. I haven't done any river tables. I, I'm really not, the shop's not big enough to do river tables unless you're gonna do them on a small scale. And I'm sure I can find somebody who would love to use this. I know I'm going to be using some of it. <laughs> and a great big slope down here. That would look. If you can incorporate that into it. This black will clean up off of here. Once it dries. And that had some really weird striping in it. When we pulled the bark off. I don't know if that's something that's going to remain either. But the looking stuff. Let's see. Deb's on her way with the water. Throw the water? Yep. Here it go. I'll come back here. Oh. Wow. wow. Look at that. Yeah, that really that pink really popped out. <laughs> there you go. Let's scrape some back up this way real quick. Just so that everything gets a chance to get wet it down. That even looks cool in there. <laughs> it's sapwood, but it's got some yeah. really some really nice figure in it. Yep. And right up against the heartwood, in the sapwood, it's pink. I know, we keep talking about it, but it's cool. <laughs> Even here in the sapwood. That looks cool too. This is like lots of lots of boar action going on here, that's for sure. It's the usual powder pose beetle boar holes is what I'm guessing. Again, one of those cooler branch nubs there. Look. These aren't just round that's knots in these. That's different. What's that? That's crotch green. It's crotch figure. It's just a little bit of it. Just a little bit of it left over, but all right, let's go ahead. We've already seen that one. Yeah. So let's go ahead and uh, get these two on the stack and wrap this one up. Another English walnut looking real good. All right, let's take a ride. <laughs> try not to drop you guys. Gotta try not to fall, too. Ready? Yeah, this is, well, this is much lighter. All right, English walnut number two in the books. We have a third one. It's too big. It's going out to the off-site mill. Oh, Unless we cut this out. We need uh, four straps, five straps. You have to strap at least the ends. The middle would be nice, especially down here near the crotch. That should be definitely be strapped near the crotch. All right, folks, that'll wrap it up here for another one at the Iron Oak Sawmill. This is our last English walnut for now that we're going to do on the mill. We do have one wider one, 32, 
inches wide, roughly 36 inches wide. We're taking it to the offsite mill, gonna have it slab two and a half inches thick or 10 quarter thick, same as these. But for now, six, let me see, one, two, five. three, four, five, good size slab. The one on the top here, uh, again, 10 quarter will make a nice bench or a wall shelf, something like that. It's got a little bit of a curve to it, but all of them had some really nice grain in it. Hey, the pink, hopefully you guys were seeing that. Uh, it looked like it was showing up in the camera, but hopefully you guys were seeing it. Pink walnut, never heard of it. Pink English walnut, definitely haven't heard of it. Uh, mineral staining, hey, if you guys know where that pink staining came from, let us know down in the comment section, really appreciate that. But we've got to get these Strap. strapped up. We use, use the right to straps to, to tie them all together, help keep them flat while they're drying. Got to get it moved over that way and clear this side of the mill because we've got some 10 by 10s to mill up next. So I'm, I'm pretty sure this one's coming out after Thanksgiving. After Thanksgiving, the Friday, Black Friday is coming out. Yep. We might put this one out Black Friday. Hopefully you're home. Hey, hopefully you're not out in the shopping madness. We don't go out in the shopping madness, that's for sure. Yeah. But uh, I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. I know with all the regulations and everything, you may not have been able to spend time with some family. Uh, unfortunately, we're not able to either this year um too many regulations in place but don't even like to talk about that we're gonna have we're gonna sit down have a nice meal with ourselves and uh, just be thankful that everybody here is healthy at the mill and that the rest of our family is staying healthy right now so hopefully you had a good thanksgiving uh we're gonna get this stuff cleaned up and stacked up but hey um like i said in the last video eighteen thousand plus subscribers now you guys are amazing thank you very much we really appreciate all the support we're getting here at the channel tons of great comments and great questions about what yes. we're doing here. But again, if you have any questions about what we're doing here with the mill, the blades we're running, Turbo 7s, good blades. Um, any of the tools we're using, uh, how we're running the mill, go ahead and put it down in the comment section. We'd be glad to help you out. And if you're interested, I can't I can't even show you my t-shirt. Can you show one. you the t-shirt? I got my t-shirt on. She's got her t-shirt on. When it's there cold. we go, it's cold out. Iron and Oaks, Iron and Oak Sawmill t-shirts. The link's down in the description down there. Check it out. Uh, click on that, take you right to the manufacturer's site. You can order them there. Hey, it's $25 a t-shirt plus five shipping. That's not bad deal at all. Not bad deal at all. And good quality shirt and, and great quality printing on that. So go ahead yes. and check that out. And uh, it does help support the channel a bit and help support a small local business for us uh, here in our community. But if you joined us here in the community, in Iron and Oak Sawmill, we definitely appreciate it. Thank you very much for all your support. Thank you. And uh, I'd like to thank everybody for that. And hey, we'll see you later next time. Thank you. And take care. What she said. <laughs>